Hello, my name is Aaron, and today I wanted to talk about four tips for board game beginners. That is, people who are relatively new to the hobby. I got into the hobby around 2011, but it wasn't until 2015 that I actually seriously started collecting and playing board games. Now, these tips are intended for beginners, but I think they're also applicable uh, to those who have been in the hobby for a few years as well. I'm not going to present them in any sort of order of importance, uh, but I will put them in the order that I think those who are new to the hobby are likely to experience them. So without further ado, let's get on to number one. All right, so number one is get informed. What does that mean? Well, we live in the age of the internet, which means if you are just getting into board games, you'd be doing yourself a disservice not to use the resources available to you. This includes BoardGameGeek, which is the largest internet database for board games, as well as YouTube, where there are several channels that give reviews and even playthroughs of games. There's even a website that tells you the prices of games and lets you know where you could find it for the lowest price. Even Reddit has a section on board games. So if you're not using all of these resources before you purchase a game, you're kind of going into it blind. And there's no reason to do that. In my experience, I found that it's helpful to look at both the positive re reviews as well as what the critics have to say. And that way I can kind of gauge if I'm going to like the game. Another benefit is that you can find games that are similar to games you enjoy. Uh, say you really like King of Tokyo. Uh, you can go online and see what people have said about the game and find games that are similar to it that people also enjoy. So that's number one, get informed. Let's move on to number two. So number two is to set an allowance. And what does that mean? Well, for one, obviously money. Whether you are on your own or if you share your income with someone else, it's important to set an allowance for how much you are willing to and able to spend on this hobby. Uh, because designer games aren't cheap. It's not like going to Walmart and picking up a $10 copy of Monopoly. Um, actual board games typically cost anywhere from $40 to $60. Uh, and if you get go down the rabbit hole that is Kickstarter, uh, they can go much higher than that. Um, so it's important to set a budget and also follow it. Another thing that you need to take into account is space. Uh, so not only should you set an allowance uh, for monetary reasons, uh, but you should also allocate space for your games, uh, especially if you're just getting into the hobby. Maybe you have four or five, uh, but if you're planning to get more, make sure that you have the space to do it, uh, either a designated bookshelf or a closet. Uh, and also it's important if you share a home uh, to make sure that that amount of space is okay with whoever you are sharing it with. Um, so that's number two. Uh, setting an allowance. I know it's not the most fun, uh, but it is important. So let's move on to number three. All right, so number three is don't overdo it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these aren't really in order of importance, but rather in order that you will encounter them, most likely. Uh, so they kind of build off each other. And number three, don't overdo it, is just that. Uh, don't go overboard. 
Uh, so by now you've hopefully set a budget, uh, you've done some research, uh, but even still, it's easy to uh, get pulled in and buy a lot of games. Um, and it's not a bad thing to have unplayed games. Uh, I have some on my shelf right here um, in the hobby that's known as the shelf of shame, uh, which is games that are brand new that you've never touched. Um, yeah, anyway. So uh, some things that can help you avoid overdoing it uh, is that you shouldn't feel the need to have everything. Um, this is especially important, I think, when it comes to playing games with other people. Uh, for example, maybe you played Carcassonne with a friend and you really loved it. Uh, so you went out and bought your own copy. Uh, but the thing is, you really only play Carcassonne with that one other friend. And they already had a copy. So essentially what you did is just buy another copy of a game that you already had access to. And that's not to say that you can't have duplicate games, but if someone in your gaming group already has a game and you typically only play it with them, there's really no reason to get your own copy uh, and unless you move away or uh, something changes and you no longer have access to it. Uh, so that's something that can help not going overboard is just not getting duplicate games. Another thing is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the internet makes it really easy to find games that are similar to what you already like. Uh, but this can also lead to instances where maybe you've ended up with six different dice chucking games after you found out that you really liked King of Tokyo, uh, except now you have six of these games that are more or less the same idea, uh, that is throwing dice and uh, doing stuff. So if you do really like a specific type of game or a specific genre, uh, make sure that you're not getting too many games that are similar to each other because you're probably only going to end up playing one or two of them. And there's a whole lot of other things that could go into uh, don't overdo it, uh, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory, uh, and those are just a few ideas there. So with that, let's go on to number four. So, number four. Don't try to convert everyone. And this is the point where, again, I mentioned that I think that these can also apply to people who are already involved in the hobby for some time. And this can be a hard one uh, because you've found this cool new hobby and you really want to just share it with people. Uh, but the reality is not everyone is going to love board games. And there's some people who think that everyone likes board games. It's just a matter of finding the right one for them. Uh, so they'll kind of go on this hunt to find the perfect game for this one person that has never liked any game that they've tried to play with them. And I don't know if I necessarily believe that, uh, but plain and simple, just don't try to turn everyone into a board gamer. It's not gonna work. Uh, now, if you played a game with someone, maybe a family or a friend uh, who's not really into board gaming, uh, but they express some interest, uh, then maybe you can see if that's something that they would like to put on their wish list, uh, maybe for a birthday or another celebration. So that's something that you can look into if they have expressed interest in it. But if there's someone who's not really into gaming, uh, there's no reason to go and buy uh, some $40 uh, designer board game that's just going to sit on their shelf. And that doesn't mean that you can't play board games with them, uh, but just don't expect them to have that same 
interests that you did. And that's fine. Maybe there's other things that they like. Maybe they like video games. Uh, maybe they like going to uh, concerts or something. Uh, so there's different things that people like and there's things that they might not like. And board games aren't for everyone. I love board games. It would be great if everyone that I knew also loved board games. But that's just not the reality of it. So that is number four. Number five. Wait, I thought this was a top four. So number five is just remember to have fun. If you're just getting into the hobby, it can be easy to get overwhelmed chasing down the latest and greatest, but take a moment to remember why you got into it in the first place. So that's the secret number five here in this top four. So those are my four tips for board game beginners. That is those who are new to the hobby, but they might also be helpful even if you've been in the hobby for a while. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and also let me know if there's anything you think I missed. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, hope to see you in another video. Take care. Bye.